Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Today Russia advanced towards Krasnohorivka and even took partially this village under control, but Ukraine deployed the capable forces of the 3rd Assault Brigade, which were able to get rid of Russians in this village. So now Krasnogorivka is again under Ukrainian control. It is located not far away from Marinka. Marinka was occupied by the Russian forces around two months ago, and they want to expand this bridgehead to advance further to Kurahova. By the way, Russia dropped a few of the gliding bombs on Kurahova today, even though they are losing their aviation, but they continue to use it. For the last 10 days, Russia lost 10 of the airplanes. So this is Kurahova today, there is some sort of the plan that was targeted by the Russian aviation, unfortunately. And here's the strike from the local CCTV camera. And this is happening in Avdivka region, so Russia has tremendous losses during their assault. Sorry, I had to censor it a little. The weather conditions now permit Russians to use BTRs. In a way, BTRs are more maneuverable and may carry more of the infantry forces. But it doesn't really help you may see lots and lots of the Russian vehicles being ambushed on their way. Yes, they are taking the ground with the mid waves, but for what cost? I still wonder why they are going and going, erasing themselves. Yes, they may have some of the gains, but finally they all kaput. Guys, you probably know that I am from Ukraine. But am I really Ukrainian? So I decided to take the DNA test to check it out. For that, I partnered with MyHeritage. MyHeritage is the leading global DNA and family history service. If you want to explore your family tree and take the DNA test to find out your origins, this is the best service. Everything is simple. You receive your DNA kit, you unbox it, you read the instruction, you put out the canisters, you unbox the stick, you put it into your mouse and roll over your cheek, you put the sample back into the canister, you pack it, and send it back. Until you wait for the DNA results, you may download some of the images of your relatives and if the image quality is kind of bad, the system will improve it. Also, they create fantastic animation, so I really like this feature. My DNA test result has just arrived and I little worry because I've never done it, but as they say, it's time to explore your ethnicity. Okay, Dennis, you are... Who am I? I am Baltic! So Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, I thought that I'm Ukrainian, but 50% Baltic is quite a lot. East European 33%, so Ukraine, Poland and all of the nearby countries. At least partially I'm Ukrainian, <laughs> as I thought. Sc Scandinavian 8%, Sweden and Norway. Balkan 6 and 5, never thought that I have a Balkan blood, by the way for Scandinavia as well. Greek and South Italian. Nice nature, nice people, awesome climate. It's the surprise for me, really. So after all, I'm more Baltic than Ukrainian. Well, actually, there was the time that Lithuania was all around the place. Totally have 5,410 distant relatives. Oh my god, such a big family. <laughs> and there you may find some DNA matches the people who might be your relatives. Awesome. Using MyHeritage you may build your family tree. MyHeritage helps you to find relatives and documents of people in your tree. Buy a DNA kit using my link in the video description just below and use coupon DENNIS for free shipping. As an added bonus you can start a 30 days free trial of MyHeritage best subscription family history research. I'll purchase the one for my wife because she asked me and she was really surprised about my Baltic origins. <laughs> Let's go back to the front lines to Olenivka, so it's a little behind the front lines. Well, Russia has the supply hub over there and the base for their soldiers, which was hammered today. Well, actually the strike was yesterday, but the information came today, they lost 19 of the soldiers. We even have the names, Russia lost Lieutenant Colonel, Major and Captain. And the commander of 155th Marine Brigade of the Russian forces was wounded. So definitely it was the command headquarters of the Russian army in Alenivka, responsible for the attack in Krasnohorivka and Marinka. That is why the 3rd Assault Brigade of Ukrainian army was successful today in Krasnohorivka. Russia lost their command in the place. And now let's check out the Russian advancement in Avdivka area. Here they are more or less successful, again losing many of the forces, but it seems like Ukraine wasn't really prepared in constructing the second defense line after Avdivka, that's why Russia is so successful out there in taking the ground, but again with tremendous losses. So the timeline, it was yesterday and it is today, the fight and going for Olivka for Tenenke and for all of the nearby settlements. I do predict that Russia will advance even further 
to this place and it will be like that they will be stopped by the natural obstacle by the river in the place as you see they are already touching the lake near to Orlivka and also on the south near to Pervomayevsky I'm not expecting that they will just collapse the Ukrainian defense around the front lines in Avdivka region and will go taking all of those small villages. No, Russia doesn't have the resources for that. It's the tactical success for the Russian army occupying Avdivka and some of the villages nearby. Unfortunately, as I say to you, Ukraine wasn't really prepared for defense of this region. We can clearly see it. The second defense line should have been built somewhere 5 kilometers away from Avdivka based on this village line. So then the fights were happening somewhere in this area. Ukraine should have built some of the defense. But we have what we have. That is why Russia is advancing quite fast. The Institute for the Study of War says that the pace of the Russian attack slowed down. Well, maybe, but not dramatically. They are still gaining lots of the territories per day in Avdivka region. Experts agree that it's just the tactical success of the Russian army. We are not speaking about the big breakthrough. Here we have the video of the Russian advancement they continue to use uh, BMPs and BTRs out there and most of them are being targeted by Ukrainian army. This one I published on my telegram channel so there are two of the Russian BTRs that were simultaneously kaboomed at exactly same timing. I wonder what Ukraine used there probably those were just mines or the FPV drones. Miraculously some of the Russian troopers survived this attack but they were finished with the drone drops. And there are tons of the videos of how Ukraine uses the FPV drones to cut the Russian supplies. Guys, some of the videos I am unable to publish on this platform, that is why I have the Telegram channel, so I highly recommend you to subscribe for me out there. Ukraine is also using the FPV drones during the night time, targeting many of the Russian vehicles, supply vehicles, boats, whatever. Russia also tries to gain control over a robot in a village on this house. Today they tried to perform the attack using BMPs. We have the video about it from the drone thermal camera. As you can see, the resistance is quite high in the place from Ukrainian side. Some of the artillery shells are lying close to the vehicles. One of the BMPs deployed the soldiers to the nearby house or what is left from the house. But later on in the morning the house was caputed by Ukrainian artillery. Also during the next attack attempt the Russian BMPs were ambushed. So-called Transnistria asked the Russian Federation to help them because they have the harm from Moldova, mostly in economical way. Russia save us, the local MPs of Transnistria said on today's meeting. As you can see they still have the communist flag. Transnistria is the unrecognized state, which was backed by Russians long time ago and now they want to do something. What it is hard to say, because as you can see it is the landlocked territory, so Russia is unable to send the forces out there. They can potentially go via sea, but they lost many of the landing ships, and to advance like that they need to capture Odessa, but it's not possible. Also Transnistria is unable to attack Moldova or Ukraine, well they may try, but they do not have enough forces. But because of today's announcement, Ukraine would obviously need to concentrate the forces near to Transnistria Republic. Maybe it was the main goal of them. Russia also might launch the landing operation in Transnistria, but all of their airplanes will be just shut down by the Ukrainian air defense. So the only way possible for Russia to escalate in Moldova is to use the cruise missiles or Shahid drones to target some of the settlements in Moldova. Can they do it? Well, I think yes. During their latest attack, Russia sent the drones all across Moldova territory. Not just by touching it, but going through the middle of Moldova. So they are not asking to enter the Russian Federation for now. They are asking for some sort of the help. What kind of help? I'm out of clue. But the similar events were happening on the eastern side of Ukraine. Then so-called DPR and LPR asked for the help from the Russian side. And now according to Russians, those are the part of the Russian Federation. But here I don't think that it is possible. Moldova officials say that everything is calm and they are not expecting the escalation in the region. Well, hopefully it will be like that. Also, we have the confirmation that Russia starts to send some of the vehicles, army vehicles, to Belarus and the other military equipment before they took their forces out from Belarus to fight on the east and now they send them back. The photo of the Russian convoy was published today. There are lots of the BMPs, so Russia is in lack of BMPs on the front lines. Why would they send those to Belarus? Probably they're preparing one more group to attack Ukraine from the north. 
trying to reach Kiev for the second time, well, for now the group is not enough for that advancement. Or they might position their forces near to Savalki corridor between Polish and Lithuanian border. Sad news, Ukraine lost the soldiers during the landing operation in Kherson Oblast. This boat was attacked by the Russian forces just at the shore and all of the marines on board lost their lives. Firstly, we got this information from the Russian side, but now it's been confirmed by Ukraine officially. Meanwhile, according to Financial Times, Russia is getting ready for the possible invasion from China. They start to concentrate some of the defense forces near to the Chinese border. Also, they are looking for the possible nuclear response. The source is Financial Times, probably they got the information from the other open sources that Russia is just maintaining their nuclear arsenal near to the border with China, that's it. Some of the media say that Pentagon is going through reforms to be able to fight in a big war. There is the major revamp to prepare for future wars. Also, Pentagon is looking to seize some of its projects to help Ukraine with around $5 billion. So without the bill to support Ukraine, United States Army loses its capability directly. Netherlands will purchase nine of the DINA self-propelled artillery systems and deliver those to Ukraine. This is the new generation of the system. Only two crew members are required to operate it. And both of them are sitting in the cockpit and this part is fully automatic. Looks nice. Big gun. This is the video of the Ukrainian Suhoi 27 fighter jet, which launches the AGM 88 harm missiles. Those are the anti radar missiles, as far as I remember. Our pilots had to launch those missiles from the low altitude just not to be spotted by the Russian raiders. That's why the range of missile is lower than usual, because it should span some of the fuel to gain the altitude and then go and descend. But those are the safety measures you cannot do in other way near to the front lines. The investigation of Maria case and the Gestomo airport in general is over. The main managers of Antonov Design Bureau now face 15 years in prison. They were found responsible for not letting Ukrainian National Guard to the airfield for building the defense lines on the territory of the airport. Fortunately, the circumstances are dramatic. Also, they failed to evacuate Antonov 225 Maria, even though they had the warning to do so as fast as possible. They were very slow, and sadly, Ukraine lost the airplane. The Polish Prime Minister. Mr. Tusk says that Poland might close the border with the Ukraine for all of the products, the agricultural products. Well, I'm so tired speaking about this nonsense uh, coming mostly from the Polish side because they are not obeying their regulations from the European Union, blocking Ukrainian grains and other products, so let it be. Ukraine should make its own conclusions about the situation for the future relations, let's say. The British military officials say that Ukraine will start the counterattack probably at the end of this year or in 2025. Well, without the new military support, it's simply impossible to start any sort of the counteroffensive. It is even impossible to secure the current territories, as you see. And even if the military support will be voted for Ukraine, the time should pass for Ukraine to receive the weaponry, around half a year. That is why the attack operations are simply not possible for Ukraine this year. Speakers of 23 countries from around the world, mostly from Europe, are calling Mike Johnson to put the voting for Ukrainian support in the House of Representatives. The deal is critical not just for Ukraine, but for the global stability. And everything depends on Mike Johnson right now. I guess that finally military help will be voted for Ukraine, but it will take more time. It will be done through the discharge petition to temporarily dismiss the speaker for the voting. It might work, but again, it takes lots of the time. Let's listen to some of the Trump supporters what they say about Ukraine. Ukraine, would it give you any pause? I don't have a problem with Russia. I really don't. I have a problem with Ukraine. They're corrupt. I think that people are just ridiculous that they think that Putin's such this enemy. He isn't doing anything. He just wants back what was his. But he invaded. He, he just wants back what was his. So Alaska was Russians not a long time ago, actually. So give it back. He invaded. Was his. He End invaded Ukraine, That's fine. killing thousands of people. That's fine. That's fine with me. It's a veteran yourself. That's fine with me. Russia invaded the other country, killing its civilians, and for her it is fine. Does it concern you at all that Russian aggression could move even beyond Ukraine? I, I don't think Putin's a problem. I think Zelensky's the problem. Why do you think Putin's not the problem? He's the I, one that invaded I, Ukraine because, and has killed thousands of people. Because Putin uh, is trying to save his country from the likes of idiots like Zelensky and the elitists. 
completely out of words. The United States of America, I hope that you just have few of those people in your society. Russian supporters calling them American patriots, what's in their head? <laughs> President Zelensky today clarified in Macron's speech about the deployment of the troops in Ukraine. While no one is saying that France will send their forces in Ukraine, the talks are ongoing about the particular specialists in its sphere. Macron is going to Ukraine at the middle of March and they will discuss the options. My guess that it is connected to Mirage 2000 fighter jets, which could be sent to Ukraine probably with French pilots and technicians. Plus, I know that Ukraine will implement the law of double citizenship, so French pilots and technicians might obtain Ukrainian passports to perform their mission. Yeah, for now it's all conspiracy, we'll see how it goes. But history tells us that there were some of the cases like that before. For example, Soviet pilots were fighting for Vietnam against American forces. Officially, they weren't there, but we know that there were. The Ukrainian Parliament Committee is looking for the ways to block Telegram in Ukraine. Hmm. Well, good luck with that. Russia already tried several years ago, but failed. It's actually quite hard to block Telegram in any kind of the country. And this is a really nice platform. It gives you the freedom of speech. You can speak and publish almost everything. There is low censorship and Telegram is very popular in Ukraine. No one trusts the official information coming from the new smartphone, but government is unable to control it, so they do afraid. That's why they want to block it, but they will fail. I know that the founder of Telegram is Russian. His name is Pavel Durov, but he was forced to leave Russia and take the other citizenship. He has quite an open mindset, so he gives gives the freedom for people to speak on Telegram, the platform is fantastic as for me. You'll not find the propaganda as on Twitter. And you know, the vast majority of the information I got also from Telegram, so it's a very useful tool. Here's for example the Ukrainian drone operator spots the UFO in the skies. Yeah, known flying object, like a stick or like a plate flying in the skies. And our guys are really surprised about this case. Tucker Carlson said that Ukraine could be behind Navalny's death. What? This guy has absolutely no brain in his head. By the way, the funeral ceremony of Navalny will happen on 1st of March. The procession will be open, so I wonder how many people will visit it. My friends, don't forget to press your huge like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And also don't forget to check out the link in the video description just below for my heritage, the best family history and DNA service on the market. Do not forget to use coupon Dennis for the free shipping of the DNA kit. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.